What we're looking at are shrimp that were harvested in the Gulf of Mexico in the area that was impacted by the BP Deepwater Horizon disaster now over two years ago. And here is a whole uh, passel of shrimp that were collected within this week in November. So this is what the fishermen's catch, uh, uh, catches look like now in the Gulf. Um, and what we have here is uh, a bunch of very sick shrimp. Looking at uh, some of these, what you notice is this blackened area through here. All this black is, is, is oil. That's what all this is compared to this, how clear and uh, orange brown this is. Uh, and, and here, I'll just drag this guy over. I mean, you can see that this is all blackened and tumors. This is where the oil is. It's in the gut and it's in the lungs. There are other abnormalities. This is a misshapen head, sort of the bigger head, no neck there. Uh, these shrimp, there are eyes on most of these shrimp. However, these two in particular, um, no eyes and no even eye sockets. Uh, the eyes should be right, right here. And they should be little uh, black dots, you know. I have never seen this happen after an oil spill, uh, these mutated wildlife like this. Death, yes. Uh, loss of uh, n numbers in a population where the populations crash, yes. But uh, tumors, actually, yes. Um, but not what I, you know, I'm thinking of is mutated wildlife here. No eyes, no eye sockets, uh, you know, these other deformities. Um, I, I believe this was because of the dispersant. Um, extraordinary spraying of just mass quantities of dispersant at the surface, at the subsurface, day after day for months. And this is, again, not uncommon with shrimp in the Gulf these days. I'd like to bring in a normal looking shrimp so you have some comparison here. You can see where the eyes are. You also see the gut region is this beautiful uh, orangey brown color. Um, uh, no tumors. Uh, this, is, this is a healthy shrimp. This one as well with the segments of the body. Uh, you could, it's really hard to tell the segments apart versus some of these ones that have been in oil, you'll see this darkened ring here. Now, the significance of this is that if you were buying shrimp in a market, mostly they come with just the tails, right? So you'd just be getting this portion on back. You wouldn't be seeing the gut. You wouldn't be seeing the tumors. You wouldn't be seeing the ones with missing eyes. You would think you're eating a healthy shrimp. But uh, would it really pass FDA inspection if, you know, you could see the head as well? Yeah, so let's take a little bit closer look at, uh, at these two. And um, here you can clearly see, uh, you know, the discoloration on the side, the tumor on, on this one, and the no eyes on this one. And this little guy has... This one has uh, eyes and no visible oil in its carapace. And then if you look at the underside of these two, you'll see uh, the problem continues in the, the shrimp with that showing no visible oil. This is all clean here, uh, clean looking, and in the one with oil and the tumor, uh, it's quite darkened and blackened. And again, in other shrimp that have been tested, this has been found to be BP's oil. What this, um, you know, the sample shows me um, is that there's a, it's a sick ecosystem. The poison is still uh, in the ocean. The poison is still in the habitat that these shrimp uh, utilize, which is pretty much everything. They, they're down in the mud, in the near shore, for part of their lives. They're out in the, uh, the shallow ocean, the deep ocean for part of their lives. So the habitat where 
where they live is still, is still oiled. Um, and the shrimp, as indicators of this ecosystem, are picking this up and processing it, as is everything in the ecosystem, in the Gulf of Mexico ecosystem that's coming into contact with this. The turtles, the shrimp, the fish, the birds, the dolphins, the porpoise, the whales, everything is still being exposed to BP oil plus the toxic dispersants. But this, this oil is not going to go away clearly for a while. It's down in the mud. The bacteria are not able to uh, process it quickly. We're looking at a story that's going to be evolving over the next, uh, you know, probably decade or more. And I hope that people will not forget this and will try to stay current on what's happening in the Gulf of Mexico. Because what happened here could happen anywhere else in the world.